Manny Harris. Justin Carter comes back. And Lucas Perry given a big lift at a time when Michigan can use somebody that's going to pick up the offense and put it on its shoulders for a while. I'm corrected. Foul was on Lucas Perry, his third. And Justin Carter for three, showing some range. Most of his points have come inside the paint area. He now has a career high with 19. That was another variation on inside out. Dribble penetration and turn and find the shooter kind of circling around you. And Creighton really has solved the concept of attacking this zone pressure. Lucas Perry again for three, not that time. And I'll tell you what, Lou, you know everybody plays this game to win. Both of these teams are in it to win it, but Creighton, for some reason, and I'm, I suspect we know what it is, this is their last chance maybe to play a ranked team, possibly their last chance. And look at the hustle right there. They realize they've got to have a signature win, take the pressure off of them come March so they don't have to win the Missouri Valley Conference tournament in order to be considered for an automatic bid in the NCAA tournament. And they're playing with a sense of urgency, and that's kind of ironic to say this early in the season. Michigan played Northern Michigan and Houston Baptist. Creighton played three games, one of those three against the top 25 team in Dayton. And they how lost much did that help them? They lost, but how much did it help them getting ready for a team like Michigan? And the fact that they played Dayton on the road, it helped them tremendously, and you can see once again. But I think they recognize that this is maybe their last opportunity to get on that radar screen this early for the NCAA tournament, playing against a ranked team like Michigan, and they're showing that they can compete. Harris throws up the three short. Gibson had a crack at the offensive rebound. Michigan in rebounds, plus two. So they've been able to compete as well as kind of cut down on their turnovers. Only 10 thus far and cut down on Michigan's ability to convert them. Creighton was last in the Valley in rebounding margin last year. Corver shoots and scores. Two-pointer for Corver, he has six. Caleb Corver, if that name is familiar to you, he's one of four brothers that played Division I basketball, and we all know Kyle Corver of the Utah Jazz. All-American at Creighton, seventh year in the NBA, and he's a shooter too. Gibson gets it back for Michigan. Caleb Corver, according to his coach, wasn't shooting enough. Got six field goal attempts in this one today. Witter in a hurry, almost lost it. And does. And Michigan continues to persist with that pressure forcing turnovers as Creighton occasionally gets a little bit out of sync a little bit into overdrive and they wind up turning it over we just talked about the fact that they had minimized their turnovers but every time they turn it over it seems like Michigan is bearing down on it ready to convert Corver with the foul his first and Zach Gibson to the free throw line the fifth year senior out of Michigan started his collegiate career with Rutgers He's played in all 69 games in his Michigan career since transferring. The Scarlet Knights. Runnels takes a seat along with Ashford. Runnels came into the game. A rebounding machine, but it really been hurting the last couple of days with back spasms, so he hasn't seen many minutes in this one. But it's been okay because Justin Carter back on the floor for Creighton has been terrific. Lawson's got a roll that time on the double team had a prime opportunity. Unfortunately he gets there too late and fouls. Lawson with the foul. Coverage of the Dick Sporting Goods NIT season tip off concludes Friday on ESPN. Seventh ranked Duke and number 13 UConn in the championship game. Dick Sporting Goods NIT season tip off part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's. ESPN Friday 5 o'clock Eastern should be a great one for Madison Square Garden. How about the UConn guards? Gibson missed everything. Wright had it. And Douglas comes out with it. Yeah, to finish the thought, the UConn guards, Jerome Dyson, Kimball Walker, combined for 40 points. 
Dyson, eight rebounds, five assists. And you take a look on the flip side, John Shire and Nolan Smith, they weren't too shabby either. It's going to be a terrific battle of backcourts. And even in the front court as well, Stanley Robinson, well, UConn, Kyle Singler for Duke. Singler getting the credit and probably first team All-American on most people's lists. But Stanley Robinson with his athleticism can change the game. Back door to Harris. Nine for Manny Harris. Young lost his footing. And Anthony Wright commits the foul. That's his first. We take a look right here at the top. Anthony Wright with just a nice bounce pass, kind of threaded the needle. To Manny Harris. And you'll see more and more of that. Again, it bears repeating. Michigan has only played, this is the third game they've played in two weeks. They've got to have a bit of rust. Um, maybe a little over anxiousness in coming out here and play. But this kind of tournament, this is where John Beeline sees what the rotation needs to be, what combinations need to be out there on the floor. Get up there, Darius. Austin cross court Stinnett all alone for three. P. Allen Stinnett, his fifth triple of the season, he has seven. Normally you don't throw a skip pass against that zone, but that time Creighton got away with it and Paid dividends, getting P. Allen Stinnett involved in the offense. The bonus. Sins there, follows another miss. Twice had a crack at it. Young to Carter. Tap pass, Stinnett. Goes out of bounds. We'll stay at the fourth of 2007 when they beat number 11, Southern Illinois. So it's been a good year and a half. Well, they're about five minutes and 55 seconds away from getting number 19 if they continue this pace. Playing solid defense, smart on the offensive end, providing the effort on the glass. Surprised they played so well after losing Booker Woodfox last year's leading score. Carter again with a two. Not when you've got that guy playing the way he has. Well, really nothing in college basketball should surprise you. I mean, it, that's the beauty of this game. You know, you got the fallibility of young men, but you also have the ability to rise to the occasion. Guys playing beyond themselves, and certainly you have to factor in development year after year. Guys work hard. Sims working hard to get the ball and then did something with it. They work hard and they get better. Sims has gotten better each and every year. He has 14. Came in averaging 22. And really that's the teaching value of intercollegiate sports. I mean you talk about what you do in the classroom but there's also leadership development, self-development out here in competition. And what can't be ignored is what Creighton athletes have done in the classroom. Yep, graduating 95% of their student athletes, which is outstanding. We don't speak enough about that, but that is the mission of the university. And Douglas has shot in and out, and Carter comes back to rebound. Eighth rebound for Justin Carter. 